bowl season is here. Are you ready to cash in on what you know? Where you play is as important as what you play. The pros play at mybookie.ag. All the lines, odds, and plays, both college and pro, all at mybookie.ag. Play where you get paid super fast, and there's never a hassle. Step up, and mybookie.ag will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. Use promo code JJ50 to activate the offer. Don't leave the money on the table. MyBookie.ag, promo code JJ50, and your first deposit is matched up to 50%. Play where the pros play, because they get paid. MyBookie.ag. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head the dead. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me a po 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 the day before Thanksgiving, and he is Jalen Rose. What up, dog? I am David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. We are Jalen Jacoby on ESPN Radio. What do we do? We get the people what they want. Happy holidays to everybody everywhere. It is not very happy holidays in Clipperland. The Clippers started 4-0 this season. The two of us both had high expectations for this team. And since they started 4-0, they have lost 11 of 12. And they have now lost 9 in a row. There they are getting scored on by the Mavs. Patrick Beverly missing shots. He's now going to have surgery. It is a mess for the Clippers. Jalen, we expected much more from the Clippers this season. Even though Teodosic and Beverly have been out. Do you think that this loss has led to Steve Ballmer and Jerry West having conversations about replacing Doc Rivers. Conversations? Those went from text to emails to meetings. Oh, oh, oh. They, oh, oh. That's how that works. Yep. Yep. There's no analysis I could give for a roster that has Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, Lou Williams, and I'll throw in Austin Rivers who probably played in each of those games to lose 11 of 12 yeah. and 9 straight. John Nari's been out too, I should mention. But it always seems like the story is injuries with the Clippers, but these particular injuries shouldn't lead to losing 11 of 12. Well, here's what they lost in the offseason. Of course, we're going to highlight Chris Paul, a terrific playmaker who still gets you 18 points and slows the game down and gets everyone else involved. Shout out. You lose the, the engine that made people better. J.J. Redick now. Mm. All of a sudden, your catch-and-shoot player that Chris Paul got shots for spreads the floor. He's not there. Yep. yep. One of the best isolation yep. one-on-one players to get you a shot late in the clock or get you a four-point play or close games for you, Jamal Crawford. Mm-hmm. He's no longer there. So they lost their firepower on the perimeter. You replace him with Ted Dosis, as you mentioned. He's hurt. Mm-hmm. Gallinari. Gallinari. He's hurt. Patrick Beverly. He's, he's hurt. hurt. So, so, in theory, again, I want to end this by saying no squad that has those players participate in all of those games should lose the way they've lost recently. And, therefore, those meetings, those conversations about Doc are being had. And Doc Rivers, in a way, has always had the, but we had injuries. You know what I mean? It seems like every time, it's, oh, we were going great. You know, we had these good stretches, but then Blake got hurt. Buck CP got hurt. It, it seems like every single year there's a, like a, there's a reason to keep him around because there are things that happen that are outside of his control that affect the team. But it seems to happen over and over and over again. And this particular losing streak, I am sure they have had some conversations about replacing him. Well, I'm going to tell you what's kept him around. He's one of the top coaches in the game. That's really yeah. what's happening. Yeah. And so if he does lose the Clipper job, maybe not immediately, but he would He'll if he back. chose to have an opportunity to coach. And, again, Colin Kaepernick is looking around the NBA like, man, it's foul Mark Jackson can't have a job. Mm-hmm. Like there's no reason why he shouldn't be in the league coaching one of these 30 basketball teams with the way he helped nurture and develop a young Golden State Warrior squad that ultimately became what they are now. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. But there's also this. You remember the Clipper team when they went to New York City and they lost and Blake Griffin shot 6 for 18 and he was a minus 20? Well, guess what he did after that? He went out with Kendall Jenner. He goes out late at night until 3 in the morning and he that's fine. Like his work day is different. Like his schedule's different. I'm not going to get mad at a guy for going out on the town, especially if he's with the person he's involved with. That's fine. My question for you is this is, 
Would bad shooting nights when you're in the NBA or would losing streaks or bad losses, would that keep you from champagne and campaigning? How do I gauge success? Realistic expectations. So it was different based on the season and the team I played on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I'm playing on the Indiana Pacers and we have one of the best records in the game and going to three straight conference finals, when you lose a game, it's not time to champagne the campaign. If you do, the optics don't look good. Yeah. you got to dial it back a little bit. More importantly, you have to do some soul searching and have whatever fun you have on the law. Let's imagine you get traded to Chicago. And they have the worst record in the league in this February. <laughs> Halftime, you're making plans. No question about it. <laughs> That's just the way it is. And so, remember, this is your job. Everybody out there that has one understands there's times that you actually need a release. Something that relieves your stress. And for a lot of people, that comes in various ways. For some athletes, it's going to come with going out, having a nice dinner, being in the public, listening to some music, enjoying the opportunities that, you're, that you've that you been given based on the, you're putting yourself in a position to be a pro athlete. So you always say that there will be no LeVar Ball slander on this program. Even though he's made a lot of questionable decisions, he's had some questionable quotes, and I questioned a lot of his moves. This one, I don't even think you can back. Here is what he had to say about his son's performance and the coaches of the Los Angeles Lakers. Quote, they're soft. They don't know how to coach my son. I know how to coach him. I tell him to get the victory. Stop messing around. Well, Luke Walton responded. Let's hear what Luke had to say. I will say this. I think that he has done a phenomenal job as a father with Lonzo because Lonzo is a special young man he's self selfless he's unselfish his teammates his teammates love him he cares about them uh he plays the game the right way so he's done a great job with that but we're not uh concerned with what parents think of how we're coaching the, the team he sounds like like a like a 10 year old soccer team coach you know what I mean? he's, like, he's a great parent but we're not concerned with what the parents think about the rotations Jalen you always back LeVar but now he is literally insinuating that he should be coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. This isn't Chino Hills High, Jalen. You cannot back LeVar Ball in this one. I back Luke Walton also, the son of a Hall of Famer and Bill Walton, my former colleague who I love seeing call games for this very fine network. You and changed the subject. Luke did a terrific job when he filled in for Steve Kerr, and he earned this Los Angeles Lakers job. Not only currently, but for the future. I love what you're doing. I, I have love a solution. what you're doing. I love what you are doing. What's the solution? You got to hire LeVar. You got to hire LeVar, right? Put him on the payroll. <laughs> Jalen. When you watch an NBA team, it's 35 people sitting on the bench, and it's another 50 sitting behind. I see my brother Amar Rashad in Charlotte sitting on the bench <laughs> with MJ. This is what I love about you. Is this, is this is why you're such a good friend. Is You will just blindly back people. You'll blindly back me no matter what I do. <laughs> LeVar Ball is talking about I need to be coaching the Lakers. And you know what you say? He should be coaching the Lakers. LeVar Ball should not be coaching the Lakers, Jalen Rose. They he should not be coaching the Lakers. But I respect your loyalty and I respect your passion and the, your ride or die The Lakers... And I'm not saying he's not good at his job because he actually is, but just the optics for Los Angeles hired the Kardashians trainer. Jalen, you really think LeVar Ball should be a coach of the Lakers? They what, can put what, him title, on the staff. what title do you give him? Assistant, assistant trainer? No, Lonzo's dad. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many parents <laughs> and friends and managers and agents that travel with NBA teams. You know Randy gets paid by the, the Cavaliers? I love this. Lonzo's dad. Why not? Magic Irv, Hall of Fame mogul. Make the call. We'll give you his number. Bowl season is here. Are you ready to cash in on what you know? Where you play is as important as what you play. The pros play at mybookie.ag. All the lines, odds, and plays, both college and pro, all at mybookie.ag. Play where you get paid super fast and there's never a hassle. Step up and mybookie.ag will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. Use promo code JJ50 to activate the offer. Don't leave the money on the table. Mybookie.ag, promo code JJ50. 50 and your first deposit is matched up to 50%. Play where the pros play because they get paid. MyBookie.ag Jalen, you always say that tomorrow is the Lions Super Bowl. Rawr! 
I'm already tailgating. Soon as this program ends, already getting it started. You know how on Christmas Eve, parents start wrapping gifts and pulling out cookies and milk for Santa. Or on just a normal Saturday turn Sunday or Friday turn Saturday where avid football fans of the college or professional game, they start to start the pregame ritual and tailgating. That's what this is going to be the second this program ends. Well, we've got a big game. The Minnesota Vikings going into the D and playing the Detroit Lions. Let's talk about the Vikings quarterback situation for a second. Case Keenum was awful under Jeff Fisher and the Rams. Jared Goff was also also awful last year under Jeff Fisher and the Rams. Both of those quarterbacks have been pretty good this year. Case Keenum even more surprising. He's had some solid performances, and now you have Teddy Bridgewater is back. So you've got the third quarterback on the depth chart. Bridgewater would probably be their, their preferred. Bradford, number two, and then Case Keenum, number three. If you are the coach of the Vikings, do you start Case Keenum or do you start Bridgewater, assuming Bridgewater's healthy? I'll start Case Keenum. Because sports, you have to account for something that's not on the scoreboard, that's not on the stat sheet, Momentum. And he played really well when given the opportunity. The opposite of what you saw take place in Buffalo when they made their quarterback change, Mm. which was a disaster. So based on that, I would keep the quarterback under center for this game. And knowing that not only I got Teddy Bridgewater back, who's been a starter in this league, and I'm happy to see that. But you give him another week or so to kind of just get his bearings back. Sure. And when an athlete's been out a long time and he tells you he's ready to go, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I want you to wait a couple more weeks to be safe. So based on that, I'll start Case Keenum. In fantasy, I'm starting the Vikings defense, which makes me root against my Lions offense. So we can win (laughs) 3-0. Well, let me give you some good news for Detroit. They've won the last four Thanksgiving Day games. I tried to they've, tell you, fam. They've won the last three games against the Minnesota Vikings. They beat the Vikings earlier this year, 14-7. to And the Vikings are truly one of the best teams in the National Football League. You listen to me one day. Do you think the Lions are going to win for real? It's the Super Bowl. Yes. How many games in a row have we won on Thanksgiving? Four. That's the longest win streak we've had at any time of any Did season. Have any streak of anything. What are you saying? Of course we're going to win. I'm just trying to see. I'm not so sure. I think, if I'm not mistaken, my little brother Big Sean is going to be performing, I think. I follow him on Twitter. I think I seen him post something. Maybe he was at the Pistons game. But either way, we're going to have somebody from the city on stage to represent. It's going to be awesome. And that one starts too early for me, man. Perfect time. Like, what's it start, 1230? That is perfect. On the East Coast? it's That's 930. That's so perfect. So here's the problem. And I need your help with this, Jalen. There's a lot of just disproportionately women in my family, especially at Thanksgiving. There's a lot of females around. It's, I mean, I think me and my son are probably going to be the only males at the house. Shout out to Uncle Garrett if he comes by. Shout out to Q. Shout out to Q. And Q isn't exactly the biggest football fan. Good. Good so for him. I, I don't even, I'm not even going to try to get the game on on the main television in the living <laughs> no, room. I'm going to have that. my little kid chamber. On a Women's I mean? Crush Wednesday, you're definitely not yeah, going to try I'm gonna that. Go, I'm going to go to the, I'm going straight to the bedroom. I might even lock the door. And you know when you talk into a microphone and use term like chamber, that could be considered a fail test. I guess so, but it's not. I call it my sports chamber. <laughs> okay. It's my sports chamber. Okay. When there's big games, I go into my sports chamber and I lock the door and I turn off all the lights and I turn the volume up to 100. Sounds like a Wu-Tang album. And, 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 <laughs> <laughs> they'll get there eventually. The side continues to the sports chamber. <laughs> now we have the Chargers playing in Dallas against mm. the Cowboys, mm. minus Ezekiel Elliott. I think I might skip this one. I get a lot of fantasy love. I got to see what Phillip Rivers does. Need him to have a big game. Dak struggled last week versus Philly. You really Three interceptions. about your fantasy team, I can tell. You talk about it a lot. Like, because, you usually talk about your fantasy team a lot, but you've been talking about it a lot lately. Well, I'm 7-4. and four, and Two weeks before the playoffs, I'm second place now in the division. Like I need these two wins. I don't think you're going to get these wins based on your team. No. I, really I put don't. the best players on the field. So everybody out there, I know it by heart. I hate to put Sanu on the bench because he has been consistent lately. 
But this is going to be the money squad we're going with this week. No one asked. Just like we draft them. There's a lot of people out there to play fantasy. Okay, to care about it. <laughs> Phillip Rivers at QB. <laughs> LeGarrette Blunt and Fernet at running back. You're the Doug best. Baldwin and Larry Fitzgerald at receiver. I know receiver. this roster by heart, too. Because you won't stop talking about it. Travis Kelsey at tight end. And here's the flex that replaced Sanu. Coming back from injury. Greg Olson. Need him the ball. Have the Vikings D. Have the Titans kicker. I know your fantasy team more than my own fantasy team now. Because yeah. off wax, it's basically all you talk about now. <laughs> <laughs> we spend more time talking about your fantasy team than any NBA team out there. Or anything on the show. <laughs> anything on the show, for sure. I wish you put uh, just, just like one-tenth of the effort into the show that you put into your fantasy team. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna start, we're going to have to start giving you incentive-laden contracts or something. Because it's because there's money at stake. We're going to get you one of those uh, Ricky Williams contracts. <laughs> one of them Roger yeah, Goodells. Yeah, yeah, That's what I want. You, let's get you one of those Roger Goodells. You don't have to worry about first class. you got a plane for the rest of your life. And then we have what looks like a good game. You know, when you put it on the schedule at the beginning of the year, the New York Giants playing the Washington Redskins. And quietly, Kirk Cousins has been putting together some good performances. Like, so, quietly, he is he's one of the top half QBs in the league. A division rival, the division rivalry, just like the Detroit game. Three of the four teams in the NFC East are playing on Thanksgiving. And I think the Washington Redskins, I think the Washington football team finds a way to win. The problem with that is I'm going to look around the house Thursday night, having dinner with Molly's family. Everything is going to be great. If the Lions and Giants lose, oh, man, I might have to sleep on the couch. That's foul. You guys need each other to commiserate. (laughs) You know? That just sounds good on wax. (laughs) Yeah, it does. I don't think anybody really sleeps on the couch. You know what I mean? Like, no, that doesn't happen in real relationships, right? No, if you out, you out. I slept on the floor for a while once, but not for real. I got back in there. My wife's Get them, Joy. My wife's the best. On a Wednesday. She run that house. <laughs> Don't ever forget it. And you, which is two different things. Very quickly, we are seconds away from Kevin Durant returning to Oklahoma City. Say he's going to play. Return of the man. He also said this when he was asked about Oklahoma City. Quote, that stuff right there is going to last forever. That Make stuff is way, way, forever. way more important than a championship. Me and my family didn't just erase those eight years in OKC, D.C. And OKC is where we grew up. My mom, my brother, me, and my family didn't just erase those eight years in OKC. What do you think about that? Facts. I, I am OKC. Facts. I'm still OKC. That Facts. blue is going to be in my blood forever. That place raised me. Don't sleep on this. Kevin Durant loves what's happening in Golden State. But Look, never say never. Let me ask you this question. And he's not burning the bridge. Let me ask you this question. He may end up back there one Will day. Will Kevin Durant fly into Oklahoma City for fun? Not for, not for you know, to play the team or not to accept an award. Like, just for fun. No. Will he ever do that for the rest no. of his life? I'm going to no. do you one better. Yes, and for charity. And I'm one thousand percent going to be right on this. He'll do that, but I'm, but, I'm, but the point I'm trying to make is: Is he, he going to fly OKC? So if he, he loves OKC so much that he would visit, he would go there. He would keep a house there. He would do something if he loved it so much. Now, is he going to keep a house there? No. Is he going to keep a vehicle there? No. Is he going to fly there on a Friday or Saturday night to go champagne and campaign? No. no. But he will go back for a charity event. Yeah, I mean he'll he'll stay. You know, he'll stay associated with the city. He cares about OKC. I believe that. I'm not saying he's he, I'm not trying to say Seattle. he does it. I'm not trying to say he does it. I wish they had a squad. They should. Jalen Rose, we have some broken news. To everyone else, it's breaking news. To Jalen and Jacoby listeners, it's broken news. The Miami Hurricanes football team is at number two in the country. They are undefeated. But listeners of this program knew that, that was going to happen months ago. Let's take a look at a prediction that I made about this Miami team. So you got one, two, three, and then probably four, I would say, and then five. Then if you repeat the process, that's a 10-by sandwich. If this man 
approaches <laughs> eating a sandwich with this level of detail and pre-production and strategy, there is no way that Miami loses a football game this year. <laughs> Jalen, what you first saw was Mark Rick, head coach, explaining his strategy to eating a sandwich. What you saw after that was me claiming that they were going to go undefeated because of the way that he eats a sandwich. I've made so many predictions on this show, most of which do not come true, but the dumbest one that I make is actually coming to fruition. What does this mean? It means that Miami must close the deal. And shout to the U, to Luke Skywalker, to all of the fans and supporters of the squad. I've been th- just that for a long time. Mm-hmm. And in the 80s, a couple of teams that I idolized, the early Georgetown, John Thompson teams, and as it transpired later, the UNLV, Jerry Tarkanian basketball teams. Mr. Rebus. And obviously, the U. And the legacy that they had. And when I got a chance to meet a few of those guys, in particular Warren Sapp in the early 90s, that became my squad other than the Wolverines. We know that this is your squad because you've sort of supported this team before on wax. If you take a look at this photo here of you wearing the Miami gear. (laughs) What's that in your left hand, Mr. Rose? I know your left hand. Is that basketball? I know I'm not drinking urine. No, No, that's a beer. That's a beer. You have age there? I'm 21. I have to I'm be. not sure you're 21. That looks like college-age Jalen Rose to me. That's what it looks like to me. That looks like college-age <laughs> Jalen Rose. Well, you've walked, rocked Miami swag, but I think based on this prediction that I made, if it bears out and they go undefeated and win the championship, should they get me a sandwich chain? You know they've got the turnover chain? <laughs> should they have a sandwich chain for me? Like I said, it just it's just baffling to me to the point where I actually love it. That so many people in mainstream America are enthusiastic. Are so, so many people in mainstream America are so enthusiastic watching young black individuals wear chains. I haven't seen it since what Slick Rick, Big Daddy Kane, Mr. T. I love it. Well, one team we know is not going to go undefeated, and we know is not going to be in the college football playoffs is your Michigan Wolverines. You love they to do this. Are playing Ohio State. You are going to the game. And Brady Quinn is on Fox Sports Radio. You remember Brady Quinn. And he said this about Jim Harbaugh and his future at the University of Michigan. He said, quote, I talked to someone who's kind of an insider within that program, and we had a long, drawn-out conversation. What he told me was, they're working on a lifetime contract. Jalen, the only lifetime contract I will ever be involved in is with my wife. And this show. And you cannot support a lifetime contract for the head coach, Jim Harbaugh. Lifetime. Why would I not support that? Jalen hasn't exactly gone undefeated since he got to Michigan, and now he's got his own players. And you don't want, you never know what's going to happen. Tomorrow's not promised. A lifetime contract, Jalen. I would do that in a minute if I was the University of Michigan, but it'd have to have an age limit, like. 75, 80. It's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, That's all I'm saying. A, we don't need a lifetime contract for anybody in anything. I don't want to see zombie old Jim Harbaugh calling plays on the sideline wearing the same khakis. Michigan will win versus the Ohio State Buckeyes this Saturday. What? Michigan's going to win. Are you serious? See, there are it's games football? during the year, like Wisconsin. Props to them. I hope they get into the playoff. It's great to see them come up. It's great to see Penn State come up. What's it, what, what, it's uh, also for the Big Ten. You know we're recording this. But the biggest game of the year is happening this Saturday. Ohio State at Michigan. And all I know is we, we will be celebrating afterwards. All I know is we'll be playing this tape on Monday, and we'll get your response on Jalen and Jacoby after they get blown out by at least three touchdowns. Some things about Thanksgiving we've discussed are cultural, but a lot of things about Thanksgiving are regional. And our colleagues over at 538, they did a poll of over 1,000 people from all over the country, and they constructed this map that you're seeing here. This is basically the disproportionately apparent regional side dishes. So these are the most popular side dishes in these regions, but these are the ones that are most specific to these regions. You've got squash 
in the Northeast, mac and cheese in the Southeast. You got cornbread, right where you'd expect it, right around Texas and the surrounding states. The Midwest is green bean casserole. And then the whole Western side of the country is salad. I have a lot of questions about this, but number one, have you ever had salad with your Thanksgiving meal? Absolutely not. I've never had salad with my Thanksgiving meal. It's never been discussed. It's never even been a thing. Why would we do that? What are we going to do? Cut up some carrots and cucumbers some and put lettuce. them into the mac and cheese and the mashed potatoes? No one's going to touch the salad. You're not going to eat salad with turkey. It's not happening. I'm surprised that salad is even... Is, I've never even been around a Thanksgiving in which salad was discussed or salad was presented. Preach. It has not happened. Preach. However, I saw that your state of Michigan... Green bean casserole? Rolls and biscuits. That was Michigan? Oh, green beans is a little bit to the west of that? Yes. We don't have a lot of green bean casserole in my no, Thanksgiving. I've never had it. Also, not a lot of squash either. If you call 985-80-Jalen, you can leave us voicemails. If you leave voicemails, we'll play them on the show just like this. Hi, Jalen and Jacoby. This is Nicole calling from L.A. I've been listening to your show for years, and plus my husband, shout out, for years on the podcast. And I have a question. Boss move or boss move? Bringing Tupperware to someone else's Thanksgiving dinner. I need to know. Thank okay. you, Nicole. We appreciate the love. What up, Dota, L.A.? Shout to her husband as well. Shout out. Is it a soft move or boss move to bring Tupperware to somebody else's Halloween, somebody else's Thanksgiving, somebody else's Christmas, somebody else's spot? Boss move. Boss move. Boss move. Let me say something, an unpopular opinion about Thanksgiving. Because it's Thanksgiving Eve. we got to have some Thanksgiving-themed content. I have Thanksgiving in my house because we have a lot of children. When you have a lot of children, people come to you, okay? Here's something that I wish would happen. I wish everyone left with all the food. I wish there was zero leftovers in my house. I don't want to see any of that food on Friday. I don't want to see any of it. I would like that so much. Reggie's in my ear already mad, and I can tell from your face you disagree. Leftovers are an overrated part of Thanksgiving. I wish I try to get rid of as much of the food to the guests that come over as possible, and my wife gives me a look when she sees me scooping the mac and cheese a little heavy for aunties. She looks, she gives me a look like, you know, that's our Mac. And that's what I plan on eating all day, all weekend. A couple of things. So we are opposite views at a lot of things, mm-hmm. which makes our program tick to me. And to me, this reminds me of our first class versus coach debate. One of the things I like about Virgin Airlines. What do we, wait, wait, you can, no, 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 no. Don't try to twist this into, into your first class thing again. One thing I like about Virgin Airlines is that they put a little barrier up, like for the club, between coach and first class. Mm -hmm. They try to deter you from using the lavatory up front. I'm the opposite of you on this one. It's refreshing. I don't eat or love many leftovers, but I do leftovers Mm -hmm. because I'm a cook. But more importantly, Thanksgiving dinner, it does taste better, in particular the turkey. Better the next day. I'll tell you why the, the turkey sandwich is a pass for me, okay? The turkey that you cut for Thanksgiving plate, you slice it a little thicker than you would for a sandwich. So you end up with a thick slices of turkey in your sandwich. They're like big chunks of turkey. I would prefer it to have a a thin slice, like a cold cut slice, if I'm going to have a sandwich. Because I don't like big, chunky, chewy, sort of like chicken breast side chunks of turkey in my sandwich. And no matter how much mayonnaise and pepper and whatever you put on there, <laughs> it's still just going to be a big, chunky turkey. And I think everyone knows that turkey is an overrated part of the, the meal anyway. Turkey's not that good. Like, there's a reason you only eat it once a year. You don't make a turkey any other time of the year. You don't. It depends on what type of turkey. Have you ever heard had deep fried turkey? No, I'm a white person. Okay. You need to have deep fried turkey. I would love to. I heard it's dangerous to make. So yes. I'm, I'm not into that. Yes. You know what I mean? And like I said, I host every year. I don't have I don't have what it takes. I don't have the utensils. I'm not getting involved. So for everybody keeping score, this is amazing. Jacoby has never had deep fried turkey, but that's not the point. Is that I'm a snob when it comes to first class. <laughs> he is when it comes to eating leftovers. I don't like leftovers. I work too hard. I want hot food. You know what I mean? I work too hard. Same way I feel I about too using hard the bathroom and putting my luggage up I, in first I work, class. I work too hard for this. Dude, I'll take some hot food. I know that makes me sound bougie or whatever, but I've had this opinion since I was broke. Bad and I don't bougie. want yesterday's food. You know? I don't want yesterday's food. I want today's food. Unless it's some Chinese, because then I can rock with that. Well, you better keep a job. I'm trying. I'm trying. 
Thank you so much for the call, Nicole in L.A. Shout out to you and your boyfriend. Shout out. Husband. Husband. And your boyfriend. <laughs> Just playing Nicole. Just playing Nicole. Just playing Nicole. <laughs> Let's listen to the next voicemail. I have a question for Jacoby. This is Monica Driver from Flint, Michigan, by way of Dayton. Question. When my family comes, they always take plates of food home. Do you have the same issue? I'm only asking because I'm African American. Sometimes my family will come in. They'll make a plate to go before they sit down and eat. Let me know what goes on with your family. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Big shout to Flint Town. I know you're still dealing with the water crisis or whatnot. It. I wish it was something that dominated the national headlines that people are using water like a third world country right now in Flint, Michigan. Mm-hmm. So I'll take this platform to do so. And I'll fall back and let you answer her question because you notice she didn't ask me anything. I think her name is Monica. You notice, let me repeat, she didn't ask me anything. No, no you got her name wrong too. She said she had a her question for Nicole. Jacoby. And then while she says talking, you point to yourself like, I got to talk. I got to talk. That's what it is doing a show with you. She asked me a question pointedly. Like, Jacoby, this is a question for you. I never answer her question. I know. But I wanted people to realize there's a reason why she didn't ask me. Well, I know what you I know what you're going through. We already we've already covered the um leftovers things. I prefer people leave. But usually it's on the way out when the to-go plates are starting to be talked about. And here's one reason is you have the initial Thanksgiving dinner and everybody hangs around so long that like you kind of go back to the food at some point. You know, even you go you go Thanksgiving dinner and then you go to desserts, but then it's like four hours later and you're you you know you maybe you, you napped or you watched the Lions lose or whatever, and you just gotta you just go back to the I'm food. Always taking shots. You always go back. I go back to my favorites. You know, the mac and cheese, which my wife makes me call it the crack and cheese because it's so addictive, and it's not good for you. But um, it's funny that she says that because she says she's African American. You, you notice how she assumed that I did not have a very diverse family. You know, I think she thought. That perhaps that we had the uh, the Caucasian only Thanksgiving, but it's a very it's a very mixed group at my Thanksgiving table. And like I said, there's a reason why she didn't ask me. Mm-hmm. And I say this respectfully: my mom is the queen of to goes and carry out. Really, she is that person that goes to a restaurant and orders carry out. Yeah, you do that too. Correct. That's I've seen you I do it, it all the time. I've seen you do it all the time. It's one of the more baffling things in the world. No you question about it. You eat dinner and you'd be like, oh, let me get this entree to go home. I'm like, well, who is that for? Are you like <laughs> me later? I just like to have it around the house. <laughs> and the other thing I want to make sure I stress, it's a boss move to make a plate as soon as you get to the spot. That's crazy. I'm going to say that's kind of rude. It's flagrant. It's kind of rude. It's It's kind of rude. I like these specific items. I'm going to make sure I'm making sure that I reserve these. And later. Are we going to take a Sharpie, put your name on it, and put it in the fridge too? Yes. Is is that what's going to happen? No, you put a a plate on top of a paper plate, and then you put your initials on it, and then you put a foil or a Ziploc around it. Oh, no. See, I'm going Tupperware. Like, you know, you have to take it home. You know what I mean? You don't want to leak in stuff in the car, in the passenger seat, or whatever. It's hard. And also, if you're Thanksgiving, if, you, if you're Thanksgiving, you plan on drinking, don't drive. No. Just take an Uber. Word up. Just take an Uber. Word up. You know, it's just not. It's, that's not. That's not good for anybody. Not safe. Never drink and drive. No. Preach. Let's listen to another female voicemail. Don't forget, if you call nine eight five eight zero Jalen, you can leave us a voicemail. Wednesdays we always celebrate the kinder, more intelligent, more mature, and just generally superior gender, the women. So we have all female voicemails today. Hey, Jalen and Jacoby, soft move or boss move? Making your password on your work computer, Jacoby Juice, so that every time I arrive at work in the morning and log on to my computer, I think of Jalen and Jacoby, my favorite podcast in the world. All right, happy Thanksgiving, guys. That's a boss move. However, giving your password out to a nationally syndicated radio program and podcast and television show might not be the boss's move. She never said where she was from. She no, never she said where she worked. She didn't say where she worked. That's right. It's a boss move. First of all, it's a huge boss move. It's flattering, too. Now I know how you feel when people get named after you. I, it just made me... I was a little like blushing just the fact that she has her password with my name in it, and you've got human beings running around the planet named after you. Huh. That's definitely a boss move. And the thing I love about our dynamic 
is that we have people that love both of us, but it's always great when people love only one of us. And that happened to us recently, mm-hmm. where a guy elbowed and pushed me out of the way. No, he handed you his phone. Just so I could take a picture with him and David Jacoby. And I bet he posted it and didn't even give you the photo credit either. I'm that sure he That would have been didn't. a boss move if he just wrote, photo, you know, the photo icon and then wrote, <laughs> he, Jalen Rose. He You're came not up IG. to us. He was like, Jalen, you are right, but you're not real. Mm-hmm. I love Jacoby. It's the, Can you, you know take a picture of us? It's the, it's the guys with the Celtics hats on. You know what I mean? Because they know me through Bill Simmons, like from the, the OG <laughs> Jacoby, like literally eight years ago, talking about Jersey Shore. Those were some of my favorite times in media. Big shout out to the Pop Father, as always, the first person to ever put me on. Shout out. Mike, to speak and be distributed. Really appreciate those calls. We have time for one more. Let's hear it, Reg. Hey, Jalen Jacoby. This is Michelle calling from Maine. You guys are really welcome to come visit anytime you want. It's pretty boring here. I'm going to keep my questions simple, all right? Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston? That's it. You guys are doing a great job. Keep giving the people what they want. Big shout to Maine. No all doubt about New it. England. Shout out. Appreciate the invite. You never know. Yeah, it might be a plane like connection. That. It may be no, an appearance. It may yeah, just be an you, opportunity you, to go visit. You know, you get kidnapped. The hostage situation. You end up in Maine. You escape. You know, you need, you need some safe haven. Who knows what could happen? You end up coaching a G League team in Portland. <laughs> Life isn't promised. But her question? It's an easy one. It's easy. Easy. Mariah Carey all day. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was about to stand on this table. <laughs> I can tell the look on your face. It's like, I'm disrespecting you in so many different ways. You've never looked at me like that when I picked Mariah Carey over Whitney Houston. No, the, man. It's, it's Whitney. This relationship was going to be it's over. It's Whitney. It's Whitney. It's Whitney. It's Whitney. No it's doubt Whitney, about it's it. It's Whitney. It's Whitney. Drops the mic. However, you know I like to watch reality TV. My wife found a Mariah Carey reality show in... I'm really glad that she made some changes with the people around her because sometimes you can just tell. I've been in the media game a long time. Sometimes you can tell, like, the people around you are not the – this isn't the cream of the crop, Mariah, and you are the cream of the crop. You need to get the people around you right. Or they just cast the show with a bunch of, you know, people that weren't great at it to give it drama. Who knows? But shout to Mariah Carey and that show. But shout it's out. Whitney over Mariah 10 times out of 10. So we went up to our 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed, and we had people ask some Thanksgiving-themed questions as we head into the holiday. Um, we asked them to ask if some things were cultural. So we've got some. Johnny wants to know, Jalen, is calling turkey stuffing dressing cultural? Yes. I'm going to say I've never heard of turkey stuffing being called dressing literally until this year. And I'm, I'm almost 40 years old. It definitely is. But I call it dressing. I've never called stuffing dressing in my life. I call it dressing. That, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of baffled by this one. This is brand new to me, by the way. I've, I've like heard this being referenced before, but I didn't understand that the person meant stuffing. I thought maybe they meant gravy. Because dressing, to me, is something that goes on a salad, a salad dressing, or it's kind of like a, like a garnish on a plate, like you're dressing a plate with, someone, with some cilantro or something. <laughs> someone feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'll take a stab at it. While I am somebody that regularly cooks, never have cooked a true Thanksgiving dinner. Me neither. Nope. And I'm not the guy as it relates to cooking sides. Nope. So I'm out that day. But here's what I think the distinction is. I think dressing also... I think dressing equals stuffing with gravy. Oh, still then. And maybe it's something. Maybe it's dressing because you put it on top of the turkey because turkey's whack. You know what I mean? You need those other flavors on it. You need the gravy. You need the dressing on there. Maybe that's how people look at it. Or perhaps you're dressing the turkey the same way you would dress the plate by filling it with stuffing. Never heard of that. Thank you, Johnny. I'm educated here. Andre says, my family had fried chicken one year for Thanksgiving. Is that a soft move or a boss move? I'm, I'm assuming that Andre had it in lieu of the turkey, and that is a boss move. Yeah. Don't waste food. Yeah. It's a boss move. It's no a boss move. Turkey. People like chicken more than they like turkey. You have chicken like three times a week. You've Eat had turkey one time like. a year. For real. Are you uh, white meat or dark meat, Jalen Rose? Dark meat. What about you? White don't meat. Get, don't, don't get a divorce. White meat. <laughs> <laughs> I like I, I like the breast meat. No, I, I car like I said, it's, it's all it's all um, women at my Thanksgiving. So I carved the turkey. I don't know why that is a gender specific task, but for whatever reason it is, I don't know why. But it doesn't have to be. 
especially on Woman Crush Wednesday. Ladies, no doubt. you can carve the turkey just as well as a dude can. Doesn't no take question. Mu- doesn't take muscles. But I do that every time, and I always cut myself the nice turkey breast pieces with the skin on it. That Those ones are safe for me. Is watching the Lions play regional? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's international. <laughs> it's been happening for 50 years. That's from Finger Roll Jones, our co-producer. No doubt about it. They're bar- a part of your family's fabric as it relates to watching football. You remember when Billy Sims stepped on the back of a Houston Oiler and kicked him in the chest? No. You remember when Lawrence Taylor picked off, I think, Eric Hippo and ran it the other way 99 no. yards for a touchdown? I don't, don't remember that at all. You remember Tony Dorsett running 99 no. yards against our defense? You also remember Billy Sims and his greatness. I don't hear a lot of Lions Megatron. highlights in these memories. <laughs> Seems like they're a lot scoring against the Lions in all these memories. Those Jay, are it? just historic plays. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's the most historic play in the history of the Lions franchise? The most historic play? Seriously, I can't think of like a signature play in the history of that franchise. You uh, can't either. Our but that was when Dan Orlovsky ran out of the back of the end zone is the only thing I can think of. <laughs> that was in the old 16 season. Rogers, the, got the Hail Mary on y'all. I was so oh, mad dude, when I mean, you know, the signature play. Sh- uh, uh, I know what it is. Sterling Sharp caught a late touchdown on Thanksgiving, thrown by Brett Favre against the right side of the field. I think that I'd say the most iconic play in the history of the Lions would be Barry Sanders breaking like 15 tackles Reversing in the backfield field. Yeah. and then spinning around and going backwards. No I'd say that, that would probably be the signature play in the, in the history of the franchise, and I can't believe it took us two minutes to think of that. It didn't take me two minutes. I was just thinking of other ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How about your boy Barry trying to get you to come support some JRLA events? Next, James is claiming that soupy mac and cheese is cultural. I've never had soupy mac and cheese. That's not cultural. That's just poorly cooked. <laughs> yeah, that's, just, that's just that's just you didn't you didn't have a strainer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want soupy mac and cheese. I don't want to be making. We're not going to do that line of demarcation here. No. So one thing that's important to me with with Thanksgiving dishes is uh, a food philosophy that I have that I want to explain to you, Jalen Rose. It's also a restaurant idea that I have. Let me pitch you a business. Can I borrow a million dollars for a restaurant? It depends on the idea. Okay. It's called the Crunch and Mush Cafe. You know how you go to certain places, it's Indian food, or you go to this place, it's a Thai restaurant, this place, it's a Chinese restaurant. They there's so much demarcation of of cuisine based on regions. But I would like my cuisine and my restaurant is going to be based on texture alone. It's called crunch and mush. And this soupy mac and cheese claim made me think of it. Wow. Do you know what I love about my mac and cheese? That my wife makes the best mac and cheese in the world? It is crunchy on top. There's a lot of crunch on top. It's, it's There's burnt pieces, and there's certain mac, mac shells that have turned hard. You know what I mean? And, like, you kind of really need, like, a knife to cut it. You can't kind of scoop it out with a spoon. But underneath, it is hot and gooey and cheesy. So you get some crunch and you get some mush. I also look for this in my mashed potatoes. Because mashed potatoes, if not seasoned appropriately or cooked appropriately, they're just kind of like, like, like flour with some water in it, you know? And I want crunch and mush in all of my dishes. Your thoughts on the Crunch and Mush Cafe? Can I have a million dollars? Too much thinking. Sorry. Well, I'm Access sorry. You, don't listen to, you didn't even listen to me. If I asked you to pitch me back that restaurant, you couldn't even do it. I know it. what you mean. Like, the perfect analogy was the mac and cheese. How it's really crunchy on top and, and everything else. on the bottom. Re- yeah, yeah like, a, like, a, like a good pie. I'm going to tell you what it's like. It's like chips in a bag mixed with popcorn. Crunch and mush. Or, you know what I love? I would I love like a tuna salad sandwich with some ruffles in there. Crunch and mush. Can I have a million dollars? I'm good. I like those two things. This is a great investment opportunity separate. for you, Jalen. This is nah, a great I'm investment good. opportunity for I'm you. I'm good. I don't want to be the first one in. Half a million dollars? I want to be the first one in. Reggie, can I have five dollars? You would have been the second one in then. <laughs> Finally, Finally, you know what? We got a new, we got a new co- uh, co-producer. Her name is Allie. I'm pretty sure this isn't a dude named Alan. I hope this is a female named Allie because there's a female picture in the avatar, so I'm assuming it's her. Soft move or boss move? Going around the table and everyone saying who or what they are thankful for. Boss move. P.S. Me and my boyfriend are thankful for you guys in the dope pods. Allie, I believe, is a woman. Uh, um, I don't think we do this at my house. I don't think this is done at my house. It should be. I don't think this is done. No. I mean, it, I, I'm not going to say we've never done it, but this is certainly not like a like a tradition that happens every year. So here's here's an exercise I want people to try to do in their own world. 
is I'm really big on don't just bring flowers to the funeral, bring soup when you're sick. Mm -hmm. I try not to only deal with things as fads. I try to own them for what they are, and if I'm truly passionate about them, believe in them and keep riding or die. Which is why you're wearing those glasses today. No question about it. When you see me with Cazelles or Cartier's, it's for one reason. Detroit dreaming. When I grew up, that's what I wanted to rock. So guess what I'm going to do when I got a black card in my my pocket? Rock whatever I want. Good for you. And that's what I wanted. Good for you. I appreciated so much how the Ice Bucket Challenge went viral and the millions and millions of dollars that went towards the cause. I wrote it down. I know what it is. But my challenge to you is any public figures or friends that you see on YouTube that have done the Ice Bucket Challenge, you go ask them, what cause was it for again? Ooh, I think I know. And I bet they won't know. I think I know. And because I never did it, it became a fad. But it was Can for charity, which was terrific, amazing, wonderful, fantastic, the um, awareness that was grown. Can I make a guess? And this is not the producer telling me in my ear. Say ALS? Correct. Boom. That's the first thing I've gotten right yeah. in the history of this program. Jalen, you are a great NBA analyst. Thank you. But you're an even better statue analyst. You are the senior statue analyst, not just of this show or of this network, but of the world. And we have some statue news. Jalen, this Saturday, the round mound of rebound. Charles Barkley will be celebrated with a statue and honored at Auburn University. As a senior statue analyst, what do you think this statue will look like? In college... He was famously known as the Round Mound of Rebound. Mm -hmm. He was hefty, the original Stretch Mark IV Mm -hmm. that would go coast to coast on you and dunk on you, make the mid-range jumper, turn over both shoulders in the post, and grab every rebound off the backboard. So to me, his statue should be one of... Let's Let's take a look. Let's take a look. You see what we have here? Not bad, right? And then it says at the bottom... Charles Barkley, <laughs> the original stretch mark four. <laughs> do you think they're going to do that? They're not going to do that. No? No. Mm. But he would like that. Congratulations, big bro. I love you. So, someone else that I know you love, supporter of the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy, owner of the Detroit Pistons, gentleman by the name of? Tom Gores. Well, there's a little bit of news about Tom Gores. At the... Pistons facility, they have iconic action shots of all of the players. And they also have this action shot of Tom himself (laughs) pointing to the heavens with his hand on his heart, casually dressed. Do you support the action shot of the owner at the facility? Absolutely. That's my brother. I'm so very fortunate that he's the owner of my hometown team. Mm Mm-hmm. Un- unhappy, obviously, for the people of Auburn Hills who lost the team, but it means so much to the fiber of the team that, along with Tom and Aaron Tellum, they got the team to play back in the city. And his passion is what drives the franchise, and it's the leading catalyst to why they've got off to a really good start so far this year. What do you think about him choosing this, the, 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 the hand over the heart point? I got to teach you a secret. What's the secret? You said it twice. I was going to let it go. What's that? Your heart isn't on the right side. That's a good point. That's a decent point. (laughs) So let's go back to the picture then. Because we had a theory that he was doing an armpit sweat sweat check. You know what I mean? Like he was just checking the pits to see see if he needed some deodorant or something. Nah. He's good. He's chilling, enjoying the game. I need to do a better job of going to hometown games. I will be going a few times in December. Good. In the 1980s, former Cleveland State coach Kevin Mackey helped bring Manute Bull from Sudan to the United States, right? And part of that was recruiting him to play in Cleveland State. And there's a lot of sort of paperwork and stuff that needed to have happen for that to work. And he recently told Zag's blog that he made up Manute Bull's birthday because he didn't know how old Bull really was. And he said that the people at immigration were fans of Cleveland State, so they didn't really, you know, they didn't really, they just kind of let it happen, right? This is what Kevin Mackey said, quote, 
He was probably 40, 50 years old when he was playing in the NBA. Jalen, you, your career just started as his career ended. <laughs> Do you think Manute Bull, that man right there, could have been 50 years old playing in the NBA? He wasn't 50. That's an exaggeration. You can look at his face and tell how young he was and as the year started to progress. But like a lot of international prospects at the time, you truly didn't know their exact age. But for his height and all of a sudden initially being called upon to be a shot blocker to become a knockdown three-point shooter, was really impressive. If he played when he was 50, that means you've still got like five or six years left of eligibility. I can make that corner three. You can make the corner three. You've still got a couple <laughs> years of college eligibility, right? I know. Let's get you and back I out there. And I haven't retired. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you, Jalen. I played with you. You're not ready for the NBA game, but you can play in college. <laughs> like, you can play in college. <laughs> if they're going to give Jim Harbaugh a lifetime contract, they can at least get you back out there, old number five, lefty number five, yelling at people. No? No? So, Jalen, I'm married. I've been through that process. Happily. Very Happily. Me and my wife have a lifetime contract. Jim Harbaugh, I wouldn't give a lifetime contract to. <laughs> Joey Jacoby, lifetime contract, no question. I like what you did there. Mike Leach, football coach, got a good personality. Reporter asked about advice about his upcoming wedding to his fiance. Mike Leach didn't just say congratulations and move on. He gave some real advice. Almost too real. Let's listen to Mike Leach's advice to a young man about to get married. The women lose their mind. Your fiance is going to lose her mind. Your mother-in-law is going to lose her mind. Your mom is going to lose her mind. Several of your sisters and uh, female relatives are going to lose their mind. And, and they're going to they're barrage you with constant questions. What should we wear? And then, uh, which, of course, my answer was, I don't care. And then, uh, what color should the invitations be? I don't care. What should we have for dessert? I don't care. Should we seat this this way or th- that that way? I don't care. But see, I don't care is not satisfactory at all. We cut that down. And the original version I saw was like four and a half minutes, and that was cut down too. Oh, wow. He kept going and going? Like He really had something to say about nuptials and the process. But you know what? Truth. He, 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 gave, he gave that young man a lot of game about getting married. Do you think his wife felt a certain way when she heard this? She would, but, but here's what I learned. You taught me this. What's that? After a while, your significant other doesn't pay attention to your public persona. No, not at all. So Mike Leach's wife, guess what happens when he comes on the local news and he's doing an interview? She changed the channel. Changed the channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He knows that, too. And based on that, there's one thing he would have switched if he thought that she would listen. I know. Instead of saying he doesn't care, he would say, whatever you like. That was the only things he would have substituted. Now, and I'm not just being like the PC guy when I say this, but... He did sort of make it seem like only females get wrapped up in the wedding stuff, and that's not how it goes in reality. Because there's some, there's always some, some upset father of, the, of the, the brides out there, you know what I mean, or some brother that doesn't necessarily love his sister's groom. There, you know what I mean. Like the 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 drama surrounding wedding preparation is not gender specific. No. As someone who's been involved, but my, my I had a very drama free experience. It was great. Joey's the best. Shout my out. advice to anybody getting married. Don't spend that much. Don't spend that much. Do you know when that money's going to come in real handy? Later in life, not throwing a party. You, you know, know when that money's going to come in handy? After your nuptials. Exactly. Don't, and and another, another piece of advice, I don't, know, I don't know why it's all financial tonight, is you're not getting that much back. You know? That's not how it works. You think you're like, oh, we're going to get gifts or whatever, but like, you end up getting like a spoon. You know what I mean? And spoons don't pay the bills. Where you're registered. Yeah, yeah, spoons don't pay the bills. A serving dish doesn't pay the bills. Nope. Don't spend that much money on your wedding. That's that's my wedding advice. I have wedding advice. Uh, oh, ooh, okay. Don't get registered. Ooh, why is that? Encourages people to buy presents. Encourage people to give you cash. Yes. But I don't know how to say that. You know what I mean? You can't put that on the invite. <laughs> Here's... Bring cash? No, like, again, it's all about your personal circumstance. Mm-hmm. Your family and friends, guess what they know? where you work, and how much you make generally. So therefore, 
if your fiscal situation calls for them to give you cash that you can use versus certain gifts that you won't be able to use, that's an efficient way for everybody to contribute. Of course. You know that Godfather scene, the wedding scene with all the money? I do. I saw that. I was young. I was like, I don't know, 13. I was like, I'm getting married. <laughs> this was great. <laughs> I didn't realize that that was cultural. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't know. It wasn't, I guess not everyone lives like a mafia boss. But when I first saw it, I was like, getting married looks great. My ultimate challenge to a media member, ask LeBron about that scene. See, yeah, exactly. if he, see if he remembers. He got no idea. He's, he's, he's like, oh, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Jalen. What up, Dow? Cowboys game tomorrow. After the Lions game, you'll be upset. <laughs> but you'll be excited for Phillip Rivers because you need him in your fantasy team. <laughs> Just a fantasy. And uh, at the Cowboys game, you can get this thing. A Texas-style dressing holiday meal. You ready for this? It's a Texas-shaped waffle made of traditional stuffing, topped with homemade mashed potatoes, a choice of roasted turkey breast or smoked pit ham, fresh green beans, and homemade cranberry sauce. The meal is stacked high and slathered with turkey giblet gravy. Let me tell you what's overrated. All of these things that are stacked. That you can't put all in your mouth at once. Yeah, exactly. I don't care if it's a hamburger. Did you see those amazing commercials with a five buns and onion rings and three patties? A pastrami sandwich that. in New York City. You go to Katz's and you get a pastrami sandwich. It's like, what do you want me to do with this thing? Like, I, I, What is this? I like cats. But I see what you're saying. No doubt about it. And so the only thing I like on my waffle, two things. Butter and syrup. I don't want mashed potatoes on. I don't need fried chicken with my waffles either. Butter and syrup. We talked about that on this program. Yeah. Shout to Nas. I got to go check out his restaurant in Queens. I think that's where it is. Chicken and waffles. He does chicken and waffles? I got to go check it out. I usually co-sign everything Nas related, but I can't co-sign chicken and waffles. I like it. That don't mean that's what you have to order. If if I'm not going to go to Pat's Cheesesteak and be like, hey, can I get a chicken sandwich? You know I mean, what I mean? Like, I, if that's what you specialize in, then that's what I'm going there you for. You don't go to steak restaurants and always order steak? D- Whoa, dirty secret. Lamb is always good at a steak restaurant. Fish is, fish is always good. Like a steakhouse. Let, go with other meats, other things on the menu at a steakhouse, and you will you will not be upset. And as somebody that loves lobster, don't always love them at steakhouses. Ooh, why is that, Mr. Rose? Because a lot of times... They only have whole lobster. They're trying to get you to pay for some four or five pound thing you're never going to eat. You just want eat. the tail? And a lot of times, I just want the tail. Oh, I like the claw meat the best. Claw meat is the best part of lobster, in my opinion. Yeah, Joey told me. <laughs> the Department of Defense is developing plants that are also spies. That's doing too much. <laughs> I just want to see what that's you say. Do, Sometimes doing you too half much. listen. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, Plants and spies. I heard all of that. It's doing too much. <laughs> like, it's sometimes it's like, it's sometimes when you hear about those studies or whatever, it's like people are spending money on this. Like if your name is Kevin and you work for the Department of Defense, your wife's name is Carla and you're leaving and Carla is like, oh, what are you doing at work today? And you're like, ah, oh, do you know what? Can you imagine what they asked me to do? They want me to develop a flower that can spy on people. Now, however... Want to hear what your mate has to say or do when you're not around? I guess that would be something interesting for the house. I'm not concerned about that. No. There's nanny cams all over my house, you know, because we have young children. So we used to have, like, you know, when they're babies, you kind of want a camera there so you can, like, of course. look at them or whatever. Right. And sometimes you just kind of forget. And you're like, ooh, that entire phone conversation could have been listened to by anybody that had the password to that camera right there. Hmm. Something to remember for the for new parents. Well, you got to change the password from Jacoby Juice. <laughs> That's not my password. That's that girl's password that called in. This guy scored two goals in the English Premier League game. Okay? And then he shows up to his child's birth still in his uniform. Soft move or boss move? Showing up for your child's birth in anything, boss move. I'm going soft move here. 
in the berths that I've been around, long process. No Hours question. and hours and hours. Like, you end up just watching TV. It's like an afternoon at the house at some points. And sometimes it's like the most crazy experience I've ever had. But I, I, want, I want some fresh draws on. You know what I mean? I want some fresh socks. But who says he didn't show up with his uniform and then make sure she was good? And then go in the bathroom I and change. I feel like my wife would be like, what are you wearing? Put some shoes on. You got cleats on and how you're dressing mud all over place. They probably did the same thing. Yeah, you smell, you know, to go take a shower. You probably wanted to. You can't be late. It's like it's like a hip-hop <clears throat> concert. You're not going to be late to the birth. He didn't want to take that 30 minutes, that hour, whatever it might take to get ready. He wanted to be present, make sure everything was golden. Then he go to the bathroom and shower and or change. I take that back. He ain't going to shower. He going to change. You ain't going to the hospital and taking a shower. shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he wore that same <laughs> funk for a couple of days. <laughs> J.R. Smith was asked if the Cavs were worried about the Celtics' hot start to the season. And here's what he had to say. Quote, nah, it's too early, too early. We don't start paying attention until after the All-Star break when you see teams spacing out. You start getting your best shot after the All-Star break. Facts. This is facts. This just sounds convenient for J.R. Smith because the Cavs are losing and the Celtics are winning. If someone tells me that if he was on a 16-game win streak, he'd be like, a win is a win. A win in October is just as good as a win in March. That's what he would say if they were winning. True story. When they're losing, he's like, he oh, he won. it doesn't really matter. We don't even care until the All-Star break. I agree. And I think there's a lot of sort of philosophies like that. Like you kind of say what serves the narrative of the moment for your team and for yourself. I'm rolling. I agree. But did, <clears throat> when you were on a competitive NBA team, you had a couple of years. When you were on a competitive NBA team, did you? When did you start really looking at the standings? You look at the standings the entire season. Mm-hmm. You start to pay attention and take it serious. When Jr. said, after the halfway point, the how, downshift. How focused are you on other teams' records? You really focus on the teams that you understand that are going to be good. And those you may end up facing. And as playoff positioning starts to happen, you're definitely paying attention because those become your opponents. It's what you do for a living. You better be paying attention. I want to get back to something that you said earlier. When you guaranteed that the Michigan Wolverines were going to beat the Buckeyes? I did. Why did you do that? Because it's going to happen. JT Bears final game versus the Wolverines, three picks. What other details are going to happen? That's the most important one. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I think you're saying that because you're going to be there. I think that has something to do with it. Of course it has something to do with it. I think that has something to do with it. But here's what's really going to happen. You're going to be down by 24 points in the third quarter. You're going to start, you know what you're going to start thinking? I could beat the traffic if I leave right now. (laughs) (laughs) The highway's coming in and out of Ann Arbor. It gets busy sometimes, especially on football, football games. They get real 96. busy. You know what? I can get a real jump on this traffic. Let me just see where my driver is. Let me just text him to see if he's available. We'll see. <laughs> I look forward to that being make you so this on happy. Monday. And the thing I is, root for the Wolverines. I do. I know you do. I do. But I do. here's what I know about you. If your theory takes place, you're going to call me at the beginning of the fourth quarter to see where I am. You're not going to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to open up our 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed because we have a simple motto on this program. So, we got a tweet from someone named Ray Lewis. Not that Ray Lewis. It's a young female. Shout out. And do you know who Dan Dakich is? I do. Terrific analyst for this network. Exactly. Coached at the University of Indiana under one Robert Montgomery Knight for hmm. a period of time. Well, perhaps that's why he said this. Because brought to our attention from Ray Lewis, not sure if this is true, but I don't think that we would we'd get tweeted this if it wasn't, that Dan Dakich claimed that the Fab Five weren't the first to bring baggy shorts to basketball. What? Now, this comes to mind, you know, my thing what? is there's no such thing as an original idea. You were not the first human beings to wear shirts, shorts that went down to the knees. However, you guys were the first ones to bring baggy shorts to basketball. It's all about extreme. Michael Jackson wasn't the first person to actually moonwalk. No. However, he made it famous. Mm-hmm. So were there teams that I looked up to 
like the Illinois squad that had Nick Anderson, Kendall Gill, Marcus Liberty, who I cut V's in the side of my hair like, they wear long shorts? Yeah. Sure. The UNLV squads with my brother Anderson Hunt, LJ, Stacey Augman, my brother Derek Coleman in Syracuse. What you guys don't realize is when D.C. came home in the summer, when Hunt came home in the summer, they gave me those shorts. And by the time I went to college the next year, I needed that. <laughs> so, yeah. in theory, he's right. Of course. And you, you guys weren't the first people to ever wear black socks. No, play we basketball. Weren't. No, we weren't. But you were the first team to popularize it. Next, this is from Dominic. He sends us lots of tweets. Shout out. Shout to Dominic. This is a good question. The Thanksgiving topic that you don't hear about too much. Dominic touched on something here. Soft move or boss move? Dressing up for Thanksgiving dinner, even though the only people there are the people that you see every day. For Thanksgiving, it's a boss move to dress up. I'm not so sure. I uh, let me finish. There's a lot of different. There's a lot of different things, but let's continue. I'm going to draw the line in the sand. Okay. If it's a Thanksgiving when you're walking around the house with the people that live there all day in your PJs, your shorts, and your T-shirts, you got your shoes on sometimes, you got your socks off other times, you're laying on the couch, all you're doing is eating and farting, then I understand not putting on clothes. Yes. But if you're like me, for example, I'm going to have Thanksgiving dinner with Molly and her family. So you have to. You're at someone so else's house. I will house. be dressing up. I think if you if you pay rent or if you're like if it's at your house, I don't necessarily I don't feel the need to put on a button up and tuck my shirt in and wear some hard bottoms just because a couple aunties are coming well, over. Well, first off, you don't wear hard bottoms anyway, so that was a bad I have analogy. Them, though you don't wear I have them. them. I didn't say you didn't have any. I own them. I didn't say you didn't own them. Okay. I say you don't wear them. Okay. So let me do another distinction, Mister Pay the Bills at the house. You don't think you should dress up for your family that comes to visit you on Thanksgiving? No. It's all, there's levels to it. If I had, I, it's only close family coming over. You can at least dress like you wear some on this show. Three aunties coming over. Like, it's not like we're having a party. You know what I mean? It's not like, it's not like we need, like, there's going to be like oh, two extra cars outside. But you still can't be walking around the house with a pro club on what? and I think your you basketball can. shorts. I think I can. I think I can. And another thing that happens at my house, which I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not going to even go regional culture, whatever, is like the dinner never really starts or finishes. You know what I mean? No. Like this, it's not. It's there's no official start time and end time to the dinner. I'm going to go cultural. Phases. There's just phases to the dinner. Oh man, I'm going to go cultural over the last two years. No, no question about it. Her family is Albanian and Italian, mm-hmm. and when they stay, when they say they're going to start at two. People are pulling up between 1.30 and 2. When we say we're going to start, first and foremost, it's not till 5. Nope. Second, people don't show up till 6.30. And then you start eating from 6.30 to midnight. Yeah. Really? 6.30? Because people never leave. Nope. Oh, so I think, I think I'm eating turkey at like 2.30. I never really know how to approach breakfast on Thanksgiving. Don't eat. But you can't do that. Really light. You get cranky. Your tummy, your tummy gets funky. You know, you need energy. Just eat light. Eat light. I did okay. that today. I got a special surprise meal I'm bringing to the crew. It's very exciting. So I'm nice and starving. I only ate one bag of chips. Had some <laughs> eggs earlier, and that's it. <laughs> I only eat one bag of chips. Jalen usually goes through about three or four bags of chips. Better made. Shout out. How long does the winning streak have to last for Kyrie to get real MVP considerations? It's also from James. First off, I'm going to teach everybody something right now. When I hear people talking about the MVP race right now, I wish I could do a three stooges slap to their yeah. forehead. Yeah. Please don't do that. It's not jaw season. <laughs> I like what you did there. Or cross country. It is too early to talk about the MVP conversation. Thank That's you. a lazy media creation that is not even relevant at this point. Yeah. Talk about it before the season, and then like five games in, start talking about how those five games have gone. The MVP is is is, is pretty far from my mind right now when it comes <laughs> to the National Basketball Association. That be the those be the people that don't appreciate the journey. They only want to break down the destination. Dominic has another great question. 
Zero to 100, how much did Ray Allen want to say his phone was hacked before he got caught? Ray Allen? Ray, Ray. <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Jesus. <laughs> Shuttlesworth. Jesus. What's, ha- what's happening, Ray? C- come talk. Socially awkward moment of the year. I, so far, for sure. First and, off, you I can just, Google it. I'm not putting it out there. He already had his socially awkward moment when he tried to slide into somebody's DMs and tell them to do some things to themselves and think about him. He's a habitual, and that became public. habitual line stepper Correct. when it comes to this. And the disappointing thing this entire period, this is what makes it news. Not that he was sliding into somebody's DMs. That's not the news. No, no, no. The news is that he's married. Yes. Yep. That's and what makes it news. The people that he was chatting with online were not the people that he thought they were. It was some dude. But that's what he get. That's what people get. I talk about that on yep. this program. The game has gotten so lazy where people think they're going to slide into somebody's DMs. You look at a profile picture. You see a little cleavage. Or you see a dude with his shirt off. Let's go back to real rap. When it wasn't about having your shirt off. Go back to the six-pack on the stoop. Shout out to Royce. That's where I got that line from. I think I'm going to change my avatar. Just (laughs) me with my shirt off. Or make it somebody's boobs. (laughs) I got enough boobs in my own. seeing people are sliding your DMs. (laughs) I want everybody... To enjoy their Thanksgiving. We are Absolutely. thankful for our staff. We are thankful for our listeners. We appreciate the your support. The greatest staff and the best listeners. We appreciate all of you. Enjoy your family. Have a safe and happy holidays. We're off tomorrow and on Friday, but we'll be back on Monday. Got to give the